Hello and welcome. Today we are talking about Silhouette Studio and the different editions that exist and what file types each edition uses. This is to help you decide when or if it is time to upgrade from the basic version of Silhouette Studio. Hello and welcome back. I'm Christy, the voice behind Crafty Christy's Creations Silhouette Studio Tutorials, which is a subset of Crafty Christie's Creations how-to videos. This is the place to find step-by-step -step directions on how to do all the things in Silhouette Studio. Whether you're a beginner or needing a little refresher, this is the place for you. So grab your computer and open Silhouette Studio. It's time to dive into another episode. Alrighty, so let's start off with the basic version of Silhouette Studio. It can open up a .studio file, which is what I have showing here, a .dxf file, .png, and a .jpeg. So I'm going to try to show you the differences in the different file types. So this one here is a .studio file. And um, so your .studio files look very similar to your SVGs, which I will show you later. But um, you can see it's all, you can ungroup everything. And then this is its own piece. Now this is its own piece. You could further go through here and um, you could release this compound path. And now each one of these is its own thing. So with it looking just like this, let's go to the send panel and see what it looks like. And you can see it's automatically going to cut out around all of our pieces here, which is exactly what we want. So again, this is your dot studio file. This is your basic um, file that you'll find in the basic version of edition of Silhouette Studio. This is the file type that you will receive if you purchase any designs from the Silhouette store. Okay, the other one that it can open is your PNG file, which I can tell this is a PNG because I have this little air um, triangle warning over here, low resolution. That's how I know it's a photo. So what a PNG is, is it's basically a photo, but it has a transparent background, meaning right now this background is white, but as I take this and I move it off of my uh, mat, it has the same background as whatever's behind it. So it has a transparent background. Now with this one, if I go to send it like it is, it doesn't really know what to do with it because it doesn't have any cut lines, it's basically just gonna cut this whole box. So let's go back. In order to make a PNG file cuttable, you need to go over to your trace panel, select the trace area, trace everything that you want to make cut, and then, um, you know, you kind of play with your threshold and such. And I'm just going to hit trace. And now your PNG, you move out of the way. Now this is your trace. And I could go through here, see it's still one piece. But now I can go through here and I can give it a color. I can release the comp, well, you don't want to release the compound path because that will do that. So let's make compound path. The only thing is you can't really ungroup. So the other thing, so that's the thing with the basic version is um, you, you get that. But when you go to the sun panel, now it's going to cut all the pieces out. Okay, so this is your PNG. You have an extra step you have to do. You have to trace your design before you can cut it. All right, and the other one that works in basic is your DXF file, which is this one. Um, when I loaded this into Silhouette Studio, it was a lot bigger than my mat size. 
and I had to select everything and then shrink it down to fit on the map. But when you go to click on it, you can see that each little piece, if I hit Control A to grab everything, it's grabbing even these little inside circle pieces. So that's the difference. This is again one you have to make um, two steps. But the thing with this is now I can hold down Control, or I'm sorry, hold down Shift, and I can unselect my black pieces, and I can just use my um, pink ones, and then I'm going to right click, Make Compound Path, and now I'm gonna come back down here, holding down Shift, grab these pieces, right click, Make Compound Path. Now, this is one, and this is one. So now when I go to send, it's gonna cut everything like that. So if I go back to design, and let's release compound path. Now if you go to send like this, it's still going to do all of the cutting fine for you. But as things get more complicated, and then if you want to move this design, each piece is going to move on its own. So it's really easier just to grab all the pieces, right click, make it a compound path, so now it knows that this inside is supposed to be cut out of that outside. So let me show you one other thing. So if I release the compound path, and I grab all of these things, and I go to give it a color so I can see what I'm doing, that's what it's going to do. Now let's see what happens when I take all those same pieces and hit make compound path. See the difference? So again, this is your DXF file. There's an extra step you need to do with it. You would have to turn it into a compound path before you're ready to cut. And then, um, a JPEG, I, I don't have an example of that, but that's your normal standard picture. You can import that into here. Uh, a lot of people do that if they're making mock-ups um, for items they're going to sell. Uh, you're not necessarily going to use a JPEG to trace. Um, I have never had good luck with that. But um, So let's move on to Designer's Edition. So Designer's Edition will open your DXF, PNG, dot .studio, JPEG, and it will also open a PDF and an SVG file. So now I'm going to show you the SVG file. This is the popular one that um, is what you, will, you can purchase. Um, outside of Silhouette. A lot of people sell SVGs on um, different platforms, and this is the most common file type used in a lot of cutting machines. So here's a look at your SVG file. Um, just looking at it, um, you wouldn't know, unless someone told you, you wouldn't know, is it a transparent S um, PNG? or is it a .studio file? They kind of all look the same. And then with this one, I can hit ungroup, and then that will ungroup my colors. But it is uh, ready to send, and it's gonna cut everything out just like that. So your SVG, you pretty much import it, and it's ready to cut, and there's nothing else you need to do to it. That's why it's one of the most popular ones that everybody really likes. All right, and then in your Designers Plus edition, you can also import embroidery files. I am not an embroidery person, so I don't know a whole lot about that, but just know that that is an option. And then in Business Edition, you can in, um, import an EPS file, an Adobe Illustrator file. Those two are mostly um, files that are used, EPS files are usually um, used by different brands of cutting machines. I believe the Glowforge uses the EPS. 
And then the Adobe Illustrator file is usually where um, professional designers start designing all of their file types or in Adobe and then um, import them into places like Silhouette. The other one that you can do in Business Edition is a CDR file, which is the um, Corel Draw, which I know a lot of people make their SVGs in programs like that. And then in Business Edition, you could import that into Silhouette Studio and use it here and cut it out. The other bonus about Business Edition is you can export. You can export an SVG, a PDF, and a JPEG. So that's really cool. Um, you're not really able to do that in any of the other editions. So depending on what you are using Silhouette for, if you are doing this as um, having a handmade cutting business, um, I would highly recommend Business Edition so you have all of those other aspects. And um, there's a lot of other tools that are in Silhouette that you can use. But if you're just the um, occasional crafter and you don't spend a lot of time creating files or, um, you know, you don't purchase files anywhere besides uh, the Silhouette store, you could really get away with the basic version of Silhouette Studio. Um, I had the basic version for probably four years before I finally decided to upgrade. And then the, the good kind of in-between place is your designer's edition. So if you do like to cut a lot of files that are that you purchase elsewhere, like on Etsy, Creative Market, Dreaming Tree is one that a lot of people use for card making, um, you know, I would recommend the designer's edition. And then obviously, if you like to do embroidery, you would need the designer's plus edition. So I hope this brings some more clarity as to the file types, what they mean, and what version of Silhouette Studio does what to help you decide what is right for you. Also, um, you can check out the silhouetteamerica.com slash software, and they have a um, form that will show you all the different uh, things that each version of Silhouette Studio can do. So check that out. I will leave a link to that so um, you can click and go. But yeah, I hope that brings you some clarity. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial valuable. If you did, click like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future Silhouette Studio tutorials. If you are interested in purchasing the design used in this video, check out the link in the description below. Happy silhouetting! Until next time, with love, Crafty Christie.